the topic of this presentation is modeling of surroundings. This uh, has been explained with the help of a case study of an institute campus. Uh, we have uh, established in the last presentation that uh, a facility which we are going to construct need to consider surroundings. Surrounding affect a facility or uh, a facility is affected by its surroundings. So that's why whenever there is a construction, its plan, its execution or its life cycle has to be decided, keeping in view its surrounding. This uh, slide shows the facility which is to be constructed that has been prepared in uh, some BIM and that has been placed in its surrounding, that uh, surrounding has been developed in GIS. So in this presentation, we will discuss how to develop surrounding with the help of GIS. So this uh, modeling of uh, surroundings in the GIS has been divided into two parts. Generally, first we model topography. Topography means the modeling of surface. Then we model whatever uh, facilities or uh, utilities or you can say that uh, infrastructure that lies on that particular surface. So keeping this thing in uh, view, we have divided this uh, or this presentation has been divided into four parts. First, we we'll start with the modeling of surface. Then once surface is modeled, then whatever facilities or uh, utilities are there above and below grounds, those are modeled. And uh, those facilities or utilities are modeled and placed on the surface model. This gives us the complete surroundings. Then building which uh, or facility which is to be constructed or planned or construction that is to be executed that is placed on its, uh, re, uh, its location in its surroundings. So first uh, we'll start with this uh, mod surface modeling. So surface modeling mean development of uh, the surface digitally or a digital representation of topography. So if we have the surface model, we can easily identify where are the valleys, where are the hills or ridge. So what generally we do, we take some points or coordinates of some points on the surface and the rest of the points are interpolated and the points which we take, those are used to develop uh, the virtual surface. So we we'll discuss it in uh, two parts. First, and uh, along with that, uh, I have listed down what are the tool or uh, software we have used for this. So let us start with the modeling of uh, surface. So first the step in the, the modeling of surface is topographical survey. Generally nowadays we use uh, total station to do survey. Survey means we just take uh, latitude, longitude and elevation of different points on the surface. And uh, data from the total station is downloaded with the help of a tool which is uh, called uh, LISCAT. This facilitate uh, actually data transfer between the total station and AutoCAD. So once data, data mean the coordinates, the coordinate which uh, we have discussed, latitude, longitude, and uh, elevation are taken. Those points are shifted with the help of LISCAT to the AutoCAD. It's a widely used drafting software. The moment uh, this data is in AutoCAD, now that need to be exported to ArcGIS. When this data, which we have taken from uh, the survey and transferred to AutoCAD with the help of LISCAD, that data is transferred to uh, ArcGIS, which is a widely used GIS software tool that generate 
a geo database and that that, uh, that geo database contain location and elevation of points in 2d now that database uh, is converted into a 2d save file this the this save file is the widely used format in gis and most of uh, the gis software recognize this actually this is non topological data actually in uh, gis we use two type of data topological and non topological data so topological data store spatial relationships along with but non topological data maintain or store only the geometry so this save file is the widely used format to store geometry but uh, it does not uh, store relationships so here this uh, when uh, the, uh, we have data in js so that data is in the form of uh, this uh, geo database and that geo database is uh, converted into shape file this uh, actually shows the points on which uh, observations were taken uh, and this uh, actually the this point shows x and y coordinate or we can say the latitude and longitude hundreds of points were taken on the surface of uh, uh, the, the institute campus so now once uh, we mark the areas but in the form of 2d save file now we have the elevation values also and that 2d save file is to be converted into 3d by assigning elevation value actually gis deal uh, as discussed in the last presentation gis deal with both type of information spatial and non spatial information this non this non spatial information is called attributes okay so attributes are stored in gis in the form of tables so the moment the those that uh, data of survey is transferred to this arcgis in the form of 2d save file we have just like we have this 3d this sorry this uh, 2d save file and at the back end we have uh, attribute table also and that attribute table so stores latitude longitude and elevation so to convert this uh, 3 2d save file into 3d we will assign that elevation value from the attribute table to the 2d points so if we say now after conversion that 2d save file looks like this now each point has latitude longitude and elevation value after assigning elevation from the attribute table now this uh, this these points or uh, coordinate of points are used to generate surface actually there are the two way out to generate surface first is the elevation raster elevation raster this raster is a rectangular array of cells in which each cell represent a square square area and uh, that that uh, that square or that cell has static value of elevation and the locational precision of an individual feature on the surface is related to the cell size in that particular raster that we developed to represent surface model if let's say cell size is small so precision is more but the file size will increase if we increase cell size then that locational precision is less so that we have to decide as per our requirement so here if we see now that uh, 3d save file has been used to develop surface so this is this shows the 2d view of the raster now another way to represent or more accurate model to represent the surface that is triangulated irregular network this is much more accurate then the raster to represent topography topography and this is widely used in uh, many of the engineering applications so 
this is actually a vector based representation actually in the gis we generally deal with the two type of data vector and raster if we take image that is the vector data for the raster data and uh, that that uh, this if we convert these points into this team that lead to the development uh, into team that is the vector representation this shows the 2d view of the team triangulated irregular network that we have developed now the two surface model those we have developed one is the vector another one is the raster this this shows the 3d view of a team and raster so first uh, this is the raster and second one is the vector which uh, we call team now what we will do we will just uh, take image and uh, we will drag this image on the surface that we have uh, created and this image will give realistic view actually suitable ground controls are used so that it uh, suitably rest on the surface that we have developed so this is the wrapping of uh, aerial image over the surface so image is uh, 2d now surface that we have developed that is in 3d so now we will be, we will place this image over the surface that uh, we have developed now on the right side if you see that is the surface that we have created so this is the topography uh, actually now this shows actually the way uh, field look like now the different views of uh, the surface of the campus from the different direction or different angle so this is the way how that surface is modeled now second thing is the modeling of existing facilities or utilities which lies on the surface or below the surface so first thing that uh, generally in gis which we used generally in planning we try to model facilities with minimum degree of detail actually uh, if we take the example of bim or cad with the bim or cad we model facility which actually facilities which actually do not exist and uh, we give maximum detail as possible so that from the detail we are in a position to construct those facility or utilities but uh, if we take the example of gis here we model things which already exist on the ground so we are more concerned with their location we are more concerned with their uh, external shape therefore we provide minimum num level of internal detail otherwise that uh, that the model size uh, will be large in size now we this these are the steps for a modeling of this facility so we will go step by step so first step is that image that we have taken that is uh, that uh, is to be overlaid over the 2d team so that uh, photograph of uh, nit hamirpur campus that we have seen that uh, has to be draped over the surface model with the help of suitable ground control uh, ground control points so then after that we will just trace out whatever building or facilities which are there from the image and for each facility we create separate uh, shape file so if we see we we have different institutional buildings which include just like uh, actually we uh, just to manage uh, the spatial data we have created one layer of uh, this institutional building which include architecture architecture department civil computer science electrical and electronics electronics and communication the mechanical department there are some other buildings also which include administrative block uh, health center library workshop shopping complex electrical substations auditorium and other lecture halls and uh, another layer that we have uh, developed that is 
related to the residential building, which include uh, faculty and staff residences, guest house or adapter residence. Then uh, another layer which we have created that include uh, all hostels, which may include uh, this Kalas, Sivalik, uh, Par Parvati, Manimhes, Dholadhar, Ravli, Udaygiri, Hingiri, Madhuri. There are other buildings which uh, buildings which uh, do, not, do not fall in the above layers, which for those we have created a uh, separate layer, which uh, which include these uh, water tanks, uh, stores, food courts, uh, nursery, tem temples, or let's say open air theater, shopping complex, institute gates, etc. So this shows uh, the layer uh, of buildings which lies uh, in the campus. Then the, the facilities or other uh, utilities include one layer of electrical pole which lies on the surface of earth, which, uh, that, which also include this uh, telephone poles, lamp posts, electrical poles, telephone poles, and uh, these uh, uh, lamp posts. Then uh, Which lies on the sewer, then uh, this uh, this boundary walls, then sewer another one layer for sewer network, water supply pipelines, road network, overhead electrical lines. This uh, shows a few of the facilities. In this, this is the uh, these are the different layers in uh, GIS uh, in which. Uh, buildings and other uh, lo location of other facilities uh, are given. Now, information or attribute corresponding to different facilities can also be maintained in GIS in the form of relational non-spatial database. So this non-relational database management system is provided in GIS that provides a data model to store, retrieve and manage geo-referenced information in the form of tables. If we see at the front end, we have, let's say we have various sources, just like we have discussed, and there is a linkage file which connect the all files corresponding to every hostel. Same way there are the institute buildings and there's a linkage file which connect this institute buildings with the files in which uh, data related to institute buildings are there. So in this way, we can have the database for uh, spatial data and uh, non-spatial data, which are maintained in the layers and tables. So this uh, we, we have developed uh, interface so that uh, user can enter information to the respective or uh, uh, respective layers. This is sample the uh, attribute tables uh, which are uh, which are stored at the back end and uh, they are available for analysis also once uh, we have traced those facilities or utilities from that uh, aerial image those uh, are assigned elevation values because they, uh, because it's a hill area and every building lie lies at different elevation. So the elevation value is taken from the surface model that uh, we have uh, developed and uh, is stored in the attribute table. Then there are those footprints of building which we have uh, traced or digitized, those were exported to SketchUp. Actually, GIS uh, does not uh, facilitate user-friendly 3D modeling capabilities. Just like we have discussed, it is used to model the facilities externally because we have, we are more concerned with location and external shape and uh, shape and uh, size. So if let's say we want to model more detail than uh, things and or the, those footprints need to be exported some in other uh, in other uh, software. So here we have used use SketchUp. So then uh, these uh, buildings were modeled on uh, the respective footprints in SketchUp. And uh, 
what was done that for every building uh, photograph uh, was taken in four different direction and those uh, photograph were pasted on the respective direction to give a more realistic view if we see this is the this uh, these are the facility or uh, buildings in sketchup uh, in which few buildings have been completed few are in the form of model and for few buildings we have pasted uh, photographs so now after this uh, modeling 3d modeling is over then this these uh, building or facilities are exported back from sketchup to gis software arc gis so there is a widely known uh, format which is called the multi patch which is used to transfer uh, 3d models from sketchup to arc gis then the third part is this uh, virtual campus now what is done that we have two things with us and those things uh, those two things are surface model and the model of facilities or utilities which lies on the surface of earth so now we have both with us now that those facilities and utilities are placed on the virtual surface to generate virtual campus so this is the view of the campus if we see we have the surface we have uh, placed existing building or existing building on the surface we have placed uh, facilities also just like electrical poles overhead electrical lines there are the few things which uh, lies below the ground which uh, have also been modeled this is uh, another view or uh, from the another direction and if we see we have modeled the roofs also but uh, again i would like to add that uh, buildings have been modeled externally and the images have the images have been taken from the at least uh, in the four uh, from the four directions and those images have been pasted pasted on the respective buildings another view so if we have uh, such type of virtual campus with us or virtual model of surrounding with us a planner may walk through any direction on that developed surface so this this virtual surface or virtual surrounding or virtual campus facility virtual widgets even without going to the surface so here if we see with how much level of detail is there in that uh, surrounding we define it with the help of level of detail widely used term and uh, if we that this is uh, that number of this level of detail increases so obviously that uh, details increases with the, that particular number generally we have five level of detail so first we will discuss here here if level of detail is zero then that means we have the surface model it is also called two and half dimensional digital terrain model so the surface model that we have developed that is the uh, level or uh, that is the model with lod zero if uh, we place buildings in the form of blocks then it is called level of detail 1 okay so l l o d is level of detail 0 with block models but it does not carry detail of roof structures or textures another view of uh, level uh, mod same uh, surface with uh, level of detail 1 level of detail 1 now we have level of detail 2 level of detail 2 is level of detail 1 but it has roof details and textures also and detail about the vegetation if we further increase this uh, level of uh, detail 2 to include this balconies roof structures vegetations or some projection then it become level of detail 
three so that the campus that we have developed or the next surrounding that we have developed that is with the level of detail three it is possible in the gis it is possible to develop a structure with level of detail four also but what happens then uh, in that case that size of that file or that model increases so we don't require that level of detail four of uh, or that include internal detail of, of existing facilities but it uh, it is possible if let's say we develop some model in building uh, information modeling and uh, with full uh, degree of internal detail that model can be on its surrounding this is another view of this uh, building with the level of detail four so this uh, slide shows that uh, this is the gs platform in which we have both graphical information as well as non graphical information if we see this uh, this this is the graphical information that has been that has been managed in the form of layers and it contain full lab internal detail although few lab few layers has been kept invisible to show internal detail and at the back end the, the way we have been talking about that uh, attribute so corresponding to every layer there is a attribute table so information corresponding to that layer is stored in this table so in this way gis facilitate the management of both type of information graphical and non graphical which has been gis specifically specifically called facial and non facial so now if now if we place whatever uh, we want to construct in its surrounding so we will have the things like this so this is the building again has been placed in its surrounding now this building model has been developed in gim and that has been placed in its surrounding that surrounding has been developed in gis so in this way we can model its inter interaction of building with its surrounding or we can see that how this building is going to affect surrounding how surrounding is going to affected by this building or to uh, it is also helpful in interacting or in modeling the interaction during its life cycle okay another building that has been placed in surrounding that has been modeled in gis another building uh, if you see here this building that has been placed in its surrounding that and the model building has been modeled in revit another view of the building this building has been modeled in revit and that has been placed uh, in its surrounding and the surrounding has been modeled in arcgis so this was all about the how to model surrounding using gis so if i conclude this uh, modeling of surrounding and its use in construction planning execution or even in life cycle is the development of execution plan or construction and that will be executable actually the use of gis for modeling of surrounding provides a multidisciplinary approach for sustainable construction and uh, that and that the model which we develop that can be used throughout the life cycle of that particular facility so more detail about this topic uh, that has been covered in this uh, manuscript last thank you and thanks thanks a lot